Hey, welcome back to the channel, my fellow weather junkies. I'm your host, meteorologist Greg Majeski, your trusted weather source here with a critical update from the Storms Prediction Center as we're going to see our first moderate risk for severe weather here coming in the next couple of days on your Friday and again on your Saturday. Now, before we get into the meat and potatoes of this critical update, if you're not yet a subscriber and you'd like to stay up on this information, please hit that subscribe button in that lower right hand corner. And if you appreciate this report, please leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up as it does help with that almighty YouTube algorithm. With that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the list from the Storms Prediction Center. So we're gonna begin by taking a look at the SPC's latest day two outlook. That's when things really get cranking. What's driving this again is we've got a very strong area of low pressure that's gonna be rolling in out of Kansas and moving in this direction, okay? This is gonna be something equivalent to a category two hurricane. Pressure's falling to 974 millibars. So we have our first moderate risk for severe weather here in the red, covering portions of Illinois, Iowa, Missouri, and coming back into the western portions of Kentucky and Tennessee. Uh, that's going to be our bullseye zone here going late in the day on your Friday and going into your Saturday morning. Let's go ahead and break this down by the category. Here is your tornado threat here uh, running a pretty good swath uh, basically from uh, areas of Illinois and Iowa all the way down in here toward Mississippi and parts of Alabama as we go through Friday night and into Saturday morning. Uh, the, the hail threat is going to have a nice little bullseye on it as well, running about 30% here in the red, uh, covers areas of Missouri. So we're talking about St. Louis in here, uh, going up through portions of Illinois as well. And as far as the wind threat, which is also going to be running very high, obviously with an extreme storm like this one, uh, the pressure gradient is already going to be very, very high. And check this out. We're talking about a 60% chance of damaging winds here, greater than 60 miles per hour here across portions of Missouri and Illinois. This thing's going to knock out power for millions and millions of folks this weekend, folks, as this wind machine gets cranking uh, from Texas all the way up into the Great Plains with this system. Now, as far as the day three is concerned, this will shift mostly into the southeast where we could see a significant tornado outbreak here across portions of Missouri, uh, Mississippi and into Alabama. We'll have the categorical breakdowns on those areas starting tomorrow once we get within 48 hours. And then finally, as we go into day four, this will be pressing off the east coast. So let's go ahead and dive into the model data and see how this thing's going to progress. So I wanted to begin just to illustrate the scope and scale of the storm system. We're not downplaying it when we say this is a monster storm because it is very, very much a big storm system. I wanted to show you the wind gust profile track here. Okay, look at this, the gust swaths. Anything here in orange, we're talking greater than 50 mile per hour wind gusts. Here across parts of the Texas Panhandle growing greater than 60 mile per hour. And I wouldn't be surprised with some of these gusts with some of the thunderstorms here across Illinois coming up to close to 70 mile per hour winds. So a big swath here in the middle of the country is gonna see significant winds, probably significant power outages. And again, because of these high winds where the snow is gonna fall, we'll have a blizzard dealing with up here across portions of Minnesota and parts of the Dakotas as this system begins to push off toward the east. So let's go ahead and break down the components on this. What's driving this? What's, why are we seeing such a big, big development of this system? Okay. Now, what we're seeing right here as we take a look at the uh, high resolution model data, you're showing a pressure here. Once again, 974 millibars on this low pressure system right here. Here's our blizzard back here. We'll see the thunderstorms developing right back in this area from areas of Illinois heading down, down toward the south. Notice the very tight pressure gradient in here, okay? So this is one big land hurricane equivalent to a category two uh, that's gonna be moving into this portion, middle portion of the country. And we've got a tremendous amount of jet energy with this. This is the 500 millibar winds. When you see the flow doing something like this, when it starts to split, that's divergence. That means the air is able to kind of split off and allows additional wind speed or spin in the atmosphere with this. So we've got this one energy that's going to set off that initial round of severe weather. Then we have this other jet energy here coming in out of Southern California. That's going to really drive the storm systems going into your Saturday. So we know we've got the wind energy. That's one of the components that we look for. The other component we look for is what we call CAPE. Basically, that's instability. That is heat there. And uh, to, again, not bad by March standards. We're still in the middle of March here, but to see surface CAPEs up here where we're going to get the initial firing off across Missouri and Illinois above 1,000, that's pretty good. Obviously, much warmer here along the Gulf Coast across portions of uh, uh, Louisiana and Mississippi and Arkansas. We have greater heat, obviously, the further south 
that you go. So let's go ahead and track this storm system using the high resolution model because right now the folks out on the west coast are the ones really getting beat up pretty good with this system coming in here. A lot of heavy rains, a lot of uh, heavy mountain snows out there in the Sierra Nevada. We're talking into the feet here uh, with this storm system as it begins to push off toward the east. Watch that time stamp there as this thing begins to roll on out toward the east here into the four corners as we go into the early morning hours. We'll have significantly heavy snows here across portions of Utah, Colorado, into uh, parts of northern Arizona and air northern portions of New Mexico. Then as the storm system begins to eject out into the plains as we go into your Tuesday, again, the wildfire threat is going to be very, very significant here across portions of Texas. We've got numerous advisories out for this area uh, that's going to be uh, kicking out with this because of what's going on with the storm system. In fact, I'll go ahead and show you that real quick here. As you can see, a, a tremendous amount of red flag warnings there in the red. And we've already got numerous, numerous wind advisories out there, obviously, uh, with the very gusty wind stretching from Illinois all the way back in toward Texas with the high wind warnings expected uh, with this uh, air with this big storm system pulling on up there. So let's go ahead and again take this further in time. Watch as things begin to develop. Looks like this is going to be an evening event. Looks like about six o'clock we'll start getting our thunderstorms here across portions of Illinois, uh, coming out of Iowa, I should say, and coming into northern Missouri as we go into the Friday evening. So this pushes off toward the east. And again, yeah, we get that blizzard starting to crank in here and we get the thunderstorms down here to start forming as well. Uh, so we're going to have two overnight events really to kind of deal with one here on Friday night and another one going into Saturday night uh, as the system pushes off toward the east. So as we look at the European, it's slightly weaker, but not by much. 977 millibars compared to 974 is really not that big a deal. The big storm system we had a little over a week ago, that one was 980. So this one is stronger, uh, comparatively speaking. So as this thing moves off toward the east here, we'll see a, a, that jet energy is going to ride around here across the southern portion of this. And we're going to see, uh, again, a significant, I think, tornado outbreak across portions of Mississippi and Alabama. Again, we showed you the moderate risk down there uh, going into your Saturday afternoon. Again, I want to go back to, over to this real quick. I want to show that instability. We do have that down here. Uh, going into your Saturday. So you notice it running pretty high there uh, across portions of Mississippi and Alabama. It does let up a little bit here. It's not as robust as what it was, I was seeing yesterday. But again, these models will continue to update as we get closer to this event as this moves on through. So we got to have the instability there. I also want to show you the jet energy with this thing. A tremendous amount of jet energy. This thing rotates around the bottom of the trough here. Just look at this very, very strong jet energy that's coming in here uh, going late in the day on Saturday. So I'm really concerned about the tornado threat here on for Mississippi and Alabama. I'm not saying we're not going to see the tornado threat on Friday. We're going to have that, but I think a, a, a bigger chance for tornadoes, I think, will be uh, running on your Saturday. Okay, right now on Friday, it's only about 10%. I think we may be pushing like 30% with a tornado outbreak here because of this very strong jet energy, the very strong diffluence that's in here, as well as the instability that's going to be into that zone. So let's go ahead and continue to track this system as this pushes off toward the east. It kind of exits off the eastern seaboard. It'll again, again, everybody here along the eastern seaboard from New Jersey down here toward northern Florida, that's where that severe risk will be coming into those zones as we go into your day four. We do have the colder weather that's going to be coming in behind this. And it looks like we'll see this thing begin to exit off the eastern seaboard and not looking too bad once this goes on by. Okay, what looks like early next week's not looking too bad. And then we got another storm system here uh, to kind of watch as we go toward the middle of next week. And yeah, look at this, got some snows on the back side of this. And we'll have to watch for some thunderstorms and maybe severe weather uh, here going out toward day seven, going into Wednesday and Thursday of your next week. Now, obviously, the, there is a blizzard component to this. I want to show the heavy, heavy snows that we're expecting uh, into this zone. So we're talking about portions of Minnesota, mostly kind of just catching parts of the Dakotas, the extreme eastern portions of North Dakota and South Dakota. Again, I'm seeing seven inches in here, seven inches. Here's one almost eight inches in here. So not a tremendous amount of snow, but we're talking winds gusting to 50, 60 miles per hour. So this is going to make life very miserable for the folks up there uh, having to deal with the winter component of this storm system. So wrapping things up on this update, we'll take a final look at the Climate Prediction Center here from days 6 through 10. Still looking at that cold trend here out on the West Coast. Very much mild for most of the eastern two-thirds of the country. This takes us basically from the 18th to the 22nd. So again, looking pretty mild there. And the trend uh, continuing a little bit of moderation out here in the West, but continuing with above normal temperatures. That'll take us almost to the end of the month. 
Now, as far as the precipitation chances are concerned, looks like it starts to settle down just a little bit. It doesn't look quite as bad, but we still got several storm systems. We're going to track a very active flow up here in the Pacific Northwest. Still looking dry weather down here into Texas. Boy, they could really use some rain down here. And it looks like it still continues that trend, but still above and over precipitation here in the east, as well as areas here into the areas of the northwest as well as we go from the 20th through the 26th. All right, so we got a very, very busy upcoming next few days here, folks. And I'll tell you, you folks, uh, we're here at Weather Nerds and at the North Georgia First Alert Weather Center are going to be really watching this very, very closely and intently uh, as we get closer. We are planning on doing a live solo YouTube broadcast on Friday. Uh, evening as we're going to be tracking the severe weather and then we'll do a simulcast with our Facebook partners over here on the North Georgia First Alert Weather Center as well on your Saturday as we track that severe weather through Mississippi, Alabama and eventually getting into where I'm at here in North Georgia. Now if you would like to participate in this as I highly recommend it please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell that way you're alerted when we start these live broadcasts. Again, we're a smaller channel, so I can give you a little more personalized service. If you have questions or concerns, you know, when you get in some of those big channels, you go to those chat rooms, it's like a thousand questions a second. And, uh, you know, those poor guys can't keep up with that. But, hey, I can because we're a smaller channel and we can do that. So if you'd like to participate, I'd like to invite you to go ahead and please hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And as always, if there's something you uh, got a question about or if you have something you'd like to see, please post that down below. I do appreciate you guys' feedback. All right, that's your update for now. You guys take it easy. Be good, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next update. Till then, y'all say weather aware. Have a good day. Bye-bye.